welcome to Wild Horse Rights. My name is Frederick. Today we are discussing dialogue. Dialogue should be used as a storytelling device, not idle chatter. You should never allow your characters to have ordinary, mundane conversations. You can mimic the tone and pacing of real life conversation, but every word your characters speak should be carefully chosen and should be used to carry the plot forward. Dialogue should be used to showcase a character's deception by having characters lie or hide information. It can be used to show emotion. Dialogue should be used to communicate vital information like revealing information which could not be obtained by any other means or hiding the drama or conflict of a scene. Here's an example of mundane, useless dialogue. Olaf waved. Hi, Susan. Hello, Olaf, she said. You want to get dinner? And beer. Okay. How about the meatloaf at the pub? There's beer there, Susan said. Okay, let's go. Okay. This example is nothing more than chit chat. Nothing is revealed about the character or the plot. It basically just takes up space. Here's a correction. Olaf took in a deep breath. Hi Susan. I didn't think I'd run into you here. Susan took a step backwards. I didn't think I'd see you here either. Did you maybe want to go for dinner? <clears throat> Susan cleared her throat. Maybe. How about the pope we used to go to? I know you like the meatloaf there. And the beer, Olaf added. Susan chewed her bottom lip. Well, okay, I suppose we should get going. The second example offers a brief glimpse into the lives of Olaf and Susan. When Olaf takes in a deep breath, we assume that there is some tension between the two. The point is confirmed by Susan's physical and verbal reaction. The dialogue alludes to a shared history and Susan even remembers Olaf's favorite meal at the pub. He says, she said. Keep speech tags simple. Speech tags are almost invisible to the readers. They serve only to remind the reader who is speaking. Adding phrases like hissed, shouted, growled, laughed can actually distract your readers from your dialogue. Some dialogue tags aren't even possible. Fancy speech tags are often a crutch for weak writing. Dialogue should speak for itself. Word choice should indicate the character's emotion or mood. Punctuation can be used to bring your dialogue to life. There is no need to type, he shouted, if you just include an exclamation mark at the end of your sentence. However, you may use speech tags to convey pitch and volume outside of shouting or yelling. Whispering cannot be conveyed with punctuation or word choice. In some cases, your dialogue may not even require a speech tag. This is especially the case when there are only two characters speaking in the scene. Add a speech tag after about three to four lines to prevent your readers from getting lost. Adding action to dialogue. He said, putting the cup down. Try not to weigh down dialogue tags by attaching actions to every tag. And no verb ending in ing. These wings are good, Leaf said, dipping the hot wing in the sauce. He dunked it again. Are you a pig or a man? Olaf asked, reaching for his axe. Overuse of these types of tags can quickly tire the reader out. It also drags the sentence out. Add action to dialogue tags only for emphasis. If you want to draw your reader's attention to a specific gesture or event which takes place during dialogue. Otherwise, place your actions after the speech tags. Olaf, how could you, Leaf said. Touching his side, blood seat between his fingers. I am finished. I am no more. That's the last time you'll ever double dip, Olaf said. He wiped his axe on the tablecloth before reaching for another hot wing. How to make your characters sound unique. The key to making characters sound unique is knowing your characters. What phrase do they use? Do they curse? Do they speak proper English? Or do they have a heavy southern drawl? Are they simple-minded or are they haughty intellectual? Sentence patterns, dialects, contractions, all of it depends on your character's background and personality. Additionally, if you develop your characters well, most of your audience will have already heard your character's voice and will use their imagination to bring the characters alive. Think about when you read your favorite books. As you read dialogue lines, notice the inflection and tone your mind adds 
to each character's speech. Internal monologues. Most writers assume that internal monologues or characters' talk process are limited to the first-person narratives. This is not the case. A character's ruminations can be displayed with ease through any viewpoint. The difference between first, second, and third person is simply the use of I and you. Here is an example of an internal monologue written in the first person. I glanced around the bar. No one seemed to mourn Lee's passing. I couldn't blame them. No one likes double dippers, especially not double dippers that use chicken bones to pick their teeth. And here is an example of an internal monologue written in the third person. Olaf glanced down the bar. The others sat stone-faced, chewing their hot wings in silence. Olaf shrugged. It was likely that they despised Leif as much as he had. The fool double-dipped in every sauce, all the while picking his teeth with chicken bones. Notice how the third-person view is just as vivid, if not more vivid, than the first-person passage. When you write in third-person, imagine you are a ghost taking temporary possession of your character's body. When you enter them, observe their surroundings and their actions. What do you notice? Do you smell the stale beer on your barbarian friend's breath? Are you angry about the size of the hot wings? Is the bartender a good-looking wench? Depending on your character's personalities, they might view the same scene in a totally different light. Terry rolled her eyes. It was 11 o'clock on a Monday night. Why were these idiots still drinking? She had poured at least 10 pitchers of beer and gotten a single bent scorched corn for a tip. Terry narrowly avoided a pair of grimy, blood-stained hands. Touch me, freak, and I'll shove that beard so far up. One of the maniacs slammed an axe down on the bar. More beer! Terry sighed. Maybe finishing that dental hygienist program wasn't a bad idea. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please like and subscribe. And if there's any topic you'd like us to cover, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you.